Good morning again. Especially after that sort of a wonderful talk, uh, it's hard to match. Uh, let me crack on with the greater tuberosity fractures. So um, the way we look at greater tuberosity fractures as shoulder surgeons is slightly different from how the trauma surgeons look at it. So uh, it's just not a piece of bone. We actually look at it more like a, the insertion point of the main muscle, which is the supra and the infra. The importance was just being ascribed to. So uh, we all know that the supra actually has a very small insertion just in the anterior aspect and the infra actually has a very big insertion. So the maximum pull on the GT fragment is going to be from the infra trying to pull it posteriorly and the uh, supra is going to pull it anteriorly. So we see most of these fractures in uh, sort of healthy middle-aged middle males, usually high velocity injuries, if they are isolated GT fractures. But then we do see them very commonly in patients who have had an anterior glenohumeral dislocation. So look at this uh, patient. She's a 35-year-old lady. She had a fall from bike. Her husband was riding the bike. So she was really cross. She had pain and deformity, uh, left shoulder. And this is how she presents in your hospital. Now, how many of you would uh, attempt a close reduction on this patient? Almost everyone, I suppose. Half of them haven't raised their hands. So what do, they, what do you want to do? You want to do open reduction on this? So that's after closed reduction under local anesthetic. And uh, how would you like to proceed on this? So this is the x-ray of the patient. Anybody wants to go further and fix this fracture? Fixing? Show of hands. So he'll go even further. You want a CT scan? OK. This is the patient after one week. I didn't take a CT scan. I just put her on a sling and send her home. And this is after one week. Does anyone want to intervene now? Another x-ray. That's two weeks. That's when I got a lateral x-ray. That's about eight weeks. And that's the patient. OK. So um, I totally agree with the point that you need to have at least two x-rays to see the posterior displacement because the superior displacement is easily seen on the anterior uh, posterior view. But to see the um, posterior displacement, you need an, at least a lateral view. So uh, this is another case. So, so what I wanted to emphasize there was 90 to 90% of the times, a GT fracture associated with uh, anterior glenohumeral dislocation can be treated conservatively. The only thing is that you have to get weekly serial x-rays to make sure that the fracture does not displace because displacement can happen even after two weeks, three weeks in these patients. So this is the next patient, a 55-year-old farmer. One of my colleagues treated this patient. He had a slip and fall, and this is how he presented. So the uh, surgeon took him into theater, reduced him, and then just to be sure, he put a couple of percutaneous screws. He didn't open it. So he put percutaneous screws. Probably he was a little bit overzealous, so while putting the screws, he actually probably cracked the GT. But he told the patient everything was good, so the patient was sent home, and he came back four weeks later like this. And he kept on telling the patient everything was fine, and the patient came at eight months with no movement, and the patient was told the screw is the cause of the problem, so a screw removal was done, and the patient still had pain. So this is the scenario which we don't want to have. So uh, in a, in a, in a uh, probably in a, in, which could be treated easily conservatively, you tend to do a surgery which is not accurate, which is not perfect, and then you end up screwing the patient's shoulder. So uh, I would like, like, to, like, to, um, like all of you to follow this classification. This is, the, um, this is a better classification than, than the AVO classification for GT fractures. So when you see a fracture of the GT, classify it either into a horizontal fracture or a vertical fracture or an implosion fracture. These are the three types of fracture you can see on a GT. So that could, there can be a vertical fracture line like a split fracture. This is probably a good fracture to be fixed with screws, but that, that too with a lot of caution. And then you have this sort of fracture which is more like an avulsion of the cuff. So this has to be treated more like a cuff tear and treated with repair of the cuff rather than fixing the fracture as a primary surgery. And then you have Elderly patients coming with this sort of a, I would like to call it an implosion fracture, as opposed to an explosion. The GT basically gets punched in, and these patients 
are sometimes very difficult to treat. They take a lot of time to recover when you treat them conservatively and uh, follow them up. So we all know the displacement, which is uh, superior and posterior, and there have been umpteen studies to show that probably a CT is a better option to see this, but at least get more than two views. If, if not, uh, two view, if not um, a CT, at least more than two or three views in the shoulder. So this study was done on cadaver, and they showed that you need at least four views, really, to measure the displacement of the GT. So how do you uh, make a decision? You really have to look at the displacement of the fracture and the associated injuries of individual patient factors. So conservative treatment, as I told, 85 to 90 percent of the fractures can be conserved. And superior displacement, even up to 3 mm, can really alter the rotator cuff biomechanics. So what we need to make sure is that when you're treating these patients conservatively, it's better to keep them in neutral rotation. Uh, as you know, the pull is posterior. So if you internally rotate the uh, patient and keep them in an internal rotation position, the pull might be too much and the fracture might be pulled. So there is a better, um, the better option will be to actually immobilize him within an, in a neutral rotation position. So this is a patient who is a scientist. You can see the CT showing minimal displacement. So this patient was treated. So this is the brace I'm talking about, which you can immobilize the patient. This will be too bulky, difficult, but then the other one is quite simple. Patient will tolerate it very well. After four weeks, you can start gentle movements. This is at uh, six weeks, and the patient really did well. But one thing you need to keep in mind, really, is the late displacement, which can happen. It is seen very often, so monitor them with weekly x-rays. So these are the various studies looking at conservative treatment. Any displacement more than 5 mm is not tolerated by the patient. So this uh, associated cuff test can be there, but usually they are, uh, when you decide to manage them conservatively, you just wait and watch, there is no hurry. But then in a displaced fracture, you need to treat them uh, surgically, and there are various surgical options. The screw option is probably the last thing I would think about. I usually uh, treat a GT fracture as a cuff tear and try to fix them either transosseously with sutures or with anchors and screws. So in a split type fracture, you can really fix them with screws, but then the other methods are there as well, like the double row suture bridge technique, and uh, sometimes if the fracture is too big, then you might have to use a small plate as well. So uh, look at this fracture. This is like a nice, big, single piece of GT. So this can be fixed with screws, uh, but then I really got... And uh, one thing you need to be uh, careful when you're doing a screw fixation on this vertical side fra type fractures is that the fracture bed is already impacted. It's actually more deep than the fracture itself because there's a lot of bone impaction, and there is a real risk of over-reduction in these patients. So you can achieve good outcome with just screw fixation, provided the fracture is not combinated and it's a big piece. But what is really appealing is doing a suture, uh, uh, suture, suture fixation, suture anchor fixation if possible, with screws. I'll show uh, the technique which I follow. Which I, um, so look at this fracture. This is a, looks like a split, but then there is combination. So you have to be really careful. And this can be easily treated just with uh, sutures, nothing else. So if you, uh, can you play that video there? So you can see that uh, which just with uh, five with bond sutures, you can achieve good stability interop, and then uh, this patient was supplemented with one anchor and a uh, lot of sutures, and you can achieve good movement, early stability, and good movement later. So um, this is another patient who was actually referred to as after eight weeks of uh, the fracture, fracture displaced quite badly, is a mentally retarded patient, but just with transosseous sutures and one or two anchors, you can really achieve good fixation. Transosseous sutures, again, in a sailor, good movement, what is even more appealing is this. You can actually use anchors in, as a medial row just next to the um, humeral head in the fracture bed, and then you can use all the sutures and tie it on to a screw. So since you're there in an open fashion, you really don't need to use a lateral row anchor. So it is just a couple of sutures and a screw, and then you can achieve a nice compression of the fracture fragment, and uh, this is the sort of movement you can achieve in these patients. It's very cheap, uh, cost-effective, and can really give a robust repair on these patients. So you have to look out for the zone of impaction on the posterior humeral head because there is a real risk of malreduction, over-reduction of these uh, fractures. Also look for uh, interop inability to close the rotator interval. So that's also important. And uh, this is not an uncommon situation we see here. 
in uh, proximal humerus fractures, ZT is the most important thing which you need to keep reduced. This was a patient referred eight weeks after surgery, and uh, we had to go and redo. So it's uh, always important. See, you can look at the GT, which is flying somewhere posteriorly. Keep in mind that GT is probably the most important thing you're seeing uh, while seeing a shoulder patient. There are arthroscopic techniques gaining popularity. In a small avulsion fracture, you can really uh, reduce it and fix it arthroscopically, and uh, papers are there. This is the final algorithm I want you to follow. So if it is a avulsion type fracture, just do a transosseous repair. Um, if it is a split, you can either use screws or still uh, do a double row anchor repair. If it is a depression fracture, just uh, watch. And if it is not improving, then consider an MRI. I'll just touch upon GT malunion. Malunion is a real problem. So uh, if the fracture fragment is displaced a lot, then probably you have to do a, a takedown and then do a tuberoplasty and reattach, but the results are not very predictable. So take home is uh, non-surgical management. Try to keep the arm in neutral rotation with a wedge and serial radiographs are really important. Do a deltoid split, do a suture anchor and a, a, a double row fixation if possible. And use screws if you're really, really sure that the fragment is uh, a single piece and is not uh, fragmented. A secure fixation can allow early range and you can get good results. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for the excellent opportunity. And I would like to invite you all to our SESICON meeting uh, next month in uh, Coimbatore. Thanks a lot.